Okay, this is module three, workplace safety. I hope you enjoyed module two. Did you watch all of the video and also the uh, check knowledge? So you've got to make sure that you watch all the videos in order for you to have a good understanding on health and safety at work place very very important so in this module 3 we're going to be discussing on workplace safety so what are we going to be covering so in this module you'll be able to understand the following safe systems of work sleep strips and falls on the same level falls from height housekeeping electrical safety and fire safety a safe system of work is a defined method of doing a job in a safe way so employers your boss must ensure that safe systems of work are available for all work activities that create significant risk in the same way that it is their responsibility to carry out risk assessment for all work activities so the key action point to consider, you've got to make sure that the person that develops a safe system of work is competent. They have to be competent. That's why they have to go through trainings, you know, courses to make sure they know what they are doing and they have to be competent. So identify and characterize all significant and foreseeable hazard. Analyze and evaluate those hazards and then determine the appropriate options for controlling the risk. Communicate the safe systems of work properly and support them by providing instruction and formal training. You've got to ensure that the safe systems of work are integrated within the framework of a well-defined health and safety management. Okay, so sleeps and trips at work. So sleeps, trips, and falls are one of the most common reasons for sustaining an injury at work. Now, these types of injuries are usually caused by poor housekeeping in the workplace, with many employees being injured due to spillages or obstructions on the floor causing sleep and trip hazard now your employer is under an obligation to provide a safe place of work under the following act the health and safety at work act 1974 the workplace health safety and welfare regulations 1992 the management of health and safety at work regulations 1999 now these act impose a duty on an employer to ensure that the work environment is always clean and maintained to a higher safety standard okay so all flows and walk ways should be kept clear of obstructions and other hazard which may present a risk or restrict access because if you have so many things along the way you know uh, the way is not clear there's so many obstructions then this will be hazardous to those that are walking so you have to make sure that all the walkways are kept clear of any obstructions okay so what are the causes the causes of sleeps and trips now there are a number of factors that cause uh, sleeps and trips we have the flooring environment footwear contamination and obstacles people cleaning so what are the preventions uh, what can I do to prevent sleeps and trips so we've got to make sure we have an effective management system in place uh, assess the risks and eliminate where possible make sure you clear up spillages as soon as they occur uh, you've got to ensure everyone is properly trained okay so ensure also the most appropriate footwear is chosen for the work 
environment. Now, conducting appropriate risk assessment, careful personal behavior, remove and report obstructions, keep walkways and work areas clear and well laid, plan cleaning schedules appropriately, and put up signs appropriately so it can be seen. Okay, so people know that you know there is an obstruction there or the floor is wet. So make sure that the sign is clear. Now, plan cleaning schedules appropriately and put up signs appropriately. Now, common sleep trips and fall hazard. Now, most sleeps and trips are caused by poor lighting, trailing cables, and suitable floor coverings, and even or damaged floor surfaces, contaminated floor surfaces, for example, liquid or grease, poor housekeeping, for example, tripping or falling over something left in a walkway. Common risk and even await flaws and obstructions causing sleep strips and falls, heel health and previous injuries, electrical hazards, mechanical hazards, equipment related injury, biological hazard, chemical hazard, violence and aggression as you can see in this picture work pressure stress strongly not used personal protective equipment displaced screen equipment shops working at height remains one of the biggest causes of fatalities and major injuries common cases include falls from ladders and through fragile surfaces work at height means work in any place where if there were no precautions in place, a person could fall a distance liable to cause personal injury. For example, a fall through a fragile roof. So what do I have to do? You must make sure work is properly planned and supervised. You must use the right type of equipment for working at height. Take a sensible approach when considering precautions. Okay, so next we're gonna check our knowledge. Module three, exercise. Please choose the correct answer. Number one, which of the following is an essential component of workplace safety? A, regular staff meetings, proper ventilation, team building exercise, lunch breaks. So make sure you choose the correct answer. Number two, what does the term PPE stand for in the context of workplace safety? So A, personal protective equipment, prevention of potential emergencies, protective product evaluation, primary prevention exercise. Question number three, which of the following is an example of an ergonomic hazard in the workplace? A, slippery flows, excessive noise, poorly designed workstations, inadequate lighting. Number four, which of the following is an example of a biological hazard in the workplace? A, chemical spills, slippery flows, blood-borne pathogens, excessive noise. Okay, so you're gonna choose the correct answer. So we make sure that you understand what we are talking about today. Next, control measures. First, assess the risk. Before working at height, work through these simple steps. Avoid work at height. Minimize the distance and consequences of a fall by using the right type of equipment where the risk cannot be eliminated. So, what are the do's and don'ts if working at height? Do Okay, take precautions when working on or near fragile surfaces. Do provide protection from failing object. Do consider emergencies, evacuation, and rescue procedures. Do ensure equipment is suitable, stable, and strong enough for the job. Don't overload ladders. Very dangerous. Don't overreach on ladders or 
step ladders. Don't rest a ladder against weak upper surfaces, example glazing or plastic gutters. Don't use ladders or step ladders for strenuous or heavy tasks. Don't let anyone who is not competent, who doesn't have the skills, knowledge and experience to do the job work at height. Now let's talk about good housekeeping. What is it? Workplace housekeeping may be defined as activities undertaken to create or maintain an orderly, clean, tidy, and safe working environment. That's good housekeeping. Effective housekeeping can eliminate many workplace hazards and help get work done safely and properly. Now, good housing keeping can result in more effective use of space, better inventory control of tools and equipment, more efficient cleanup and maintenance, more hygienic workplace conditions, and improved look and feel of the work environment. Effective housekeeping is crucial for workplace safety and efficiency. A clean environment reduces hazard and destructions, while clutter increases the likelihood of falls, spills, and other dangerous incidents. Now, some of the effective tips for workplace housekeeping you can use to create a safer environment. So, prevent sleep strips and falls. Now, sleep strips and falls are the third leading cause of injuries, as I explained before, that take workers off the job. Now, quickly clean spills, very important. If you see any spill, just clean it. Don't wait for the cleaner. <laughs> don't, don't report to the manager. Just clean it straight away. Okay, clear walkways and use anti-sleep flooring and grab bars where necessary. Now, how do you prevent cross-contamination? Regularly clean cloth and sticky surfaces to avoid the spread of germs between department, work site, and employees' homes. Train your employees in effective housekeeping. Make sure every worker understands the small responsibilities that lead to big safety improvement. Store materials in their proper places. Accumulated materials can present hazards for tripping, fires, explosion, and more. Clear out clutter. Clutter causes inefficiency and greater potential for slip strips and falls. So keep all aisles, stairways, and emergency exit clear and ensure workers return tools and material to storage as quickly as possible. Electrical safety at work. Now, electricity is a familiar and necessary part of everyday life. But electricity can kill or severely injure people and cause damage to property. Now, there are simple precautions when working with or near electricity that can be taken to significantly reduce the risk of electrical injury to you and others around you. Now, what are the hazards? Now, the main hazard of working with electricity are electric shock and burns from contact with live part, injury from exposure to airsing, fire from faulty electrical equipment, or maybe installations, explosion caused by unsuitable electrical apparatus or static electricity, uh, igniting flammable vapors or dust, for example, in a spray or paint booth. So what do I have to do? You, what you have to do, you must ensure an assessment has been made of any electrical hazard which covers who could be harmed by them, how the level of risk has been established, and the precautions taken to control that risk. Now, key point to remember, ensure that workers know how to use electrical equipment safely and make sure enough sockets are available. Check that socket outlet are not overloaded. Ensure there are no trailing cables that can cause people to trip 
or four, switch off and unplug appliances before cleaning or adjusting them. Make sure anyone working with electricity has sufficient skills, knowledge and experience to do so. Because incorrectly wiring a plug can be dangerous and lead to fatal accident or fires. Stop using equipment immediately if it appears to be faulty. Have it checked by a competent person. Okay, now let's talk about fire safety in the workplace. So as the responsible person, you must carry out and regularly review a fire risk assessment of the premises. So this will identify what you need to do to prevent fire and keep people safe. You must keep a written record of your fire risk assessment if your business has five or more people. We discuss this in module two. Now, how do you carry out the assessment? The first one you have to do is identify the fire hazard. Okay, review and update the fire risk assessment regularly. Identify people at risk. Evaluate, remove or reduce the risks. Record your findings. Prepare an emergency plan and provide training for your staff. You need to consider this very important emergency route and exit, fire detection and warning systems, firefighting equipment, the removal or safe storage of dangerous substances, and an emergency fire evacuation plan. The need for vulnerable people, for example, the elderly, young children, or those with disabilities. Provide information to employees and other people on the premises. Staff fire safety training, very important. So every member of your staff, the need to complete the fire safety training. Now, general fire safety hazard. Fires need three things to start. A source of ignition, which is heat. A source of fuel, something that burns and oxygen sources of ignition include heaters lighting naked flames electrical equipment smokers materials cigarette matches etc and anything else that can get very hot or cause spark sources of fuel include wood paper plastic rubber or foam loose packaging materials waste rubbish and furniture Sources of oxygen include the air around us. Okay, so we have come to the end of our module 3. I hope you have enjoyed this session. So next, we are going to check our knowledge. In this module 3, check your knowledge. You're going to choose the correct answer. So number 1, what is the safe systems of work? A. A system put in place by the employer to control the number of hazards. B. An established company plan to combat accident in the workplace. C. It is a company risk assessment. And D. A method of doing a job in a safe place. Number two. Which of these is not a common cause of slips? Wet leaves on the floor? Spillages? trailing cables, wet floors from cleaning. Question number three. Your employer is under an obligation to provide a safe place of work under the following Act. Human Rights Act 1998, Discrimination Law Equity Act 2010, Racial and Religious Hatred Act 2006, the Management of Health and Safety at Work Regulations, 1999. Number four, if someone has spilled a liquid on the floor, what should they be encouraged to do? A, report it to the manager or maybe ignore it. Inform the cleaners, clean it up straight away.
Right, so congratulations and well done to have come so far. We have finished our module three. So next module four, we will be talking about workplace welfare. So I will see you in our next video.